This is Spurge, and you're listening to Baselines and Banter. All right, and start. Um, Theo Vaughn, who's that? Theo Vaughn is a comedian, uh, a southern gentleman, and uh, he's just using YouTube to his benefit. He's crushing it. I should probably oh, take my I think maybe I might have seen him. I think Vice did something on him because he, like, yeah, I think they, like, profiled him or something. I saw on, like, a Vice News. The point is, um, is, is you, you've built a cool thing here, Spurge. You've built you. a crazy fucking cool thing. Thank you. And people are showing up, and you're putting it on your own YouTube channel. I am, And yeah. you're not waiting for someone to hand you something. You're building it yourself. And that's what I've always thought is, like, the key. you got to build it. you got to just you do, do it. You do. You know? You can't. And it's, yeah, it's just, like, realizing what's around you. So, like, the millions of talks that we have had at the lot, and mm-hmm. being like, this is a time and place, especially... Now with kind of like things changing a little bit over there for church and stuff. That's right. It's like, you know, very sentimental of, wow, this has been a beautiful time. And I'm really, I don't know. I'm just, I just understand how imperative it is to capture it. You can't get too comfortable in any situation in the arts because things change so quickly. The rug can get pulled out from under you. Yeah. And you got to build something up again. So that's coming from a man who's uh, been in the business for... Who's had the rug pulled out for me, like, <laughs> innumerable amounts Coming from of a man times. who's been in the business, uh, I guess your first album was I was looking 20, like, 2009? Yeah, I think, I mean, I would, if, if I could say my discography started in 2009, that would be great. But there are some, like, earlier releases <laughs> that I'm not the most proud of that came out starting around 2007. Yeah. Under the yeah. same moniker? Same, faulty deal, yeah. Okay. I wish I had, like, it was a whole yeah. other thing. <laughs> I once asked this really awesome seasoned visual artist named Stefan Dean, who's a French uh, artist, lives up in Queens. And I was like, man, what do you do if you, like, put something out there, like a record, and, and you're really not proud of it? And he was like, you buy every copy. <laughs> And I was like, shit, I hadn't thought of that, but yeah. I, can't, I can't afford to buy every copy of my own record. <laughs> yeah, that's like me doing this Goldman Sachs commercial. I'll be like, holy shit, I'm going to see my face somewhere yep. weird. Maybe. Um, so you like podcasts a lot. I know you've talked about it before because you want to start your own, right? I, well, I was thinking about it, yeah. But I do. De- I love them because um, making music and listening to music and running the label all day long... So, like, when I go to the gym or when I'm grocery shopping or when I'm out of the house doing something, I don't want to listen to more music. Yeah. Kind of, like, a little burnt out or I want to keep it fresh. So I listen to podcasts. Yeah. It's, like, way easier. And it's funny because they've been around for a while, but it seems like in the last, like, three years they've just, just like become... Popped. Yeah. Why, why yeah. is that? It, like, it was, like, huge yeah. down and then it's huge again. I don't know. Well, I think um, it's because all of these labels are threatening the digital distributors with their music. So Spotify... I know in particular, it's just throwing so much money into them because they're like, it's original content that isn't licensed in that manner. Yeah. So they can like make more money off of it and not have like, you know, Warner or somebody be like, if you don't keep these prices as low, like blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's, yeah. a good, that's, a good, that's a good idea. Yeah. Again, build it yourself and then something like that might come along and buy it from you. Yeah. Um, okay, so we already introduced you. Yep. Drew. My name okay. is Drew. I make music under the name Faulty DL. I run a record label called Blueberry Records. I hey. DJ at the Lot Radio and I hang hey. out with my buddy Spurge. Hey. And my cousin Uncle Juke is over there, hey. aka Jamie. He made a bang in Coco Vin earlier. I'm a little full, but I feel good. Sounded juicy. It was. I poured the wine myself. <laughs> Entire bottle. Nice. That's what you need on this uh, polar vortex. <laughs> I was like, yo, I had some Coco Vin. You were like, that sounds French. <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> That's Coco because it is. <laughs> it is. And when I texted you earlier, I was like, en route, en route, or whatever, which I think is also French. <laughs> You have a whole French Did you understand night. that text message when no, I said I think my, my phone was uh, like away, so I didn't even see it. Is your phone one of the ones? Yeah, it's, that's, it's one of the uh, cameras. It, okay. <laughs> I like the, what's that? Is that a fisheye lens on the right one? Uh, yeah, it's like a wide angle lens. Nice. So it's nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, good little that's professional awesome. finish. That's cool. Yeah, I like this crew, man. These are like, these are your pals. How did this start? This good. I'm going to interview you now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to 30 minutes. I got to ask you some questions. Um, like very briefly, I mean, it's just kind of, yeah, it was like an idea. I actually, so I had a radio show in college called Baselines and Banter. Um, oh, okay. And it started because I had a Tumblr where as I was learning how to produce music, I would just like repost links and like, you know, set reminders and shit for myself. Yeah. And I would just all like dump it there so I could go back to it. And I know exactly when that was because you mentioned Tumblr. So I know, I know the years yeah, that yeah, that must exactly. have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, before Tumblr banned porn. That's right. Um, but apparently you can get that back on there now. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't look at porn. I'm off porn. But <laughs> at all. But um, I haven't looked at it all day. Yeah. So I kind of had this idea and this was, you know, I guess a little bit more than a year ago. And um, 
I was just trying to like figure out a good way to like interact with the circuit and nightlife and I'm not somebody that necessarily always goes out. I'm like aware of everything that's happening, but I was trying to find a good middle. And similarly, I love podcasts. I love talking to people. Yeah. And I had it, you know, this kind of like. You're very charismatic, man. You've like, you've yeah. like, you've, you've reached the apex of, I think, a bunch of things that work very well for you. And I think this is a, this is yeah, a good exactly. spot for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, enough about me. We only got 30 minutes. We got to do that, it. Can you tell like that? That's how I deflect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want it because I don't want to talk. I know, yeah. I was I gonna actually, say. I, it's like, I love the idea of talking about myself because I am an, e I am an egotistical artist, like <laughs> as, as all genius artists should be. No, I'm kidding. But as all artists are, you know. Um, Fair enough. But in, in practicality, like when uh, I'm talking about myself, it's so uncomfortable. Yeah, like, oh my God. Well, because I think everything I've done isn't good enough and I'm not interesting. And yes, the, the, you know what I mean? That's not true. You're sitting here getting interviewed. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay. Question <laughs> one then. Um, yeah, let's softball real quick. And kind of, uh, this is a you know, New York centric podcast. Yep. Um, let's kind of talk about how you came to be here. Yeah. Uh, you moved here when? I came here in 2006. 2006. Yes, from New Haven, Connecticut. So not very far yeah, away. About crazy far. Yeah, hour 45, two hours, just up uh, Metro North 95, up to up to Connecticut. And you were how old? You're you're pretty young, right? Yeah, I moved here at 24. Yeah. So about 12 years ago. Fuck yeah. Do the math. <laughs> um, no, I came here to get out of the city that I was in, which like. If you're not plugged into the academic scene of Yale University or whatever it is down there, you know, I couldn't really find anything that was interesting to me. It's a hard city to pursue the arts if you're not plugged into the university, I found. And I didn't want to do that, so I uh, somehow convinced my parents that it would be a good idea if I moved to New York and... Um, and went to like City College okay. and, got, and tried to get a degree in Sonic Arts. Okay, so I've already told one lie, and that's that actually the idea came from my mother. She was like, you know what? You're not doing much here in New Haven. Yeah. Like, I could help you. Like, I could move you to New York. Oh, you, you, you go, you get New York, and you get, uh, you get New York State, um, what's it called? Uh, residency. No, just residency okay. in New York to prove that you live here, and then go to school, and it's only going to cost you like a couple hundred bucks a semester, So, which was great for me because I didn't want to waste anyone's money on school. And I was like, a couple hundred bucks a semester, I could do that, yeah. knowing that like I'm probably not going to take it all that seriously. It wouldn't be the biggest... like. Yeah. Waste. Were you were you at home like making music at this point? What was kind of your? Because I know you also played in like jazz band, right? Yeah, yeah. I was kind in a I was I was in a jazz sort of funk. Uh, that's a cliche, but it was a yeah. It was it was a really cool band with a bunch of musicians from New Haven that were all into making in, uh, original instrumental music, which was great. So there was like no covers. We were all we were writing music, which was great. That's, so that's no, yeah, like learning how to get over a writer's block and make new stuff. From the get-go, like just doing it. Reflects within your output. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I uh, I don't run out of ideas. I run out of patience sometimes, and like the ability to sit there and like finish things. But um, uh, yeah. So I mean, I so I was making music in New York, and I had just started. Oh, sorry, in New Haven, and I had just started making electronic music, like like really just the first year when I was still living there. And it was very inspired by eclectic sort of like IDM British music, like Aphex Twin, Square Pusher, drum and bass, drill and bass, stuff like that, really like weird. Um, although it's not that weird now that I look back at it, but yeah, but splattery uh, yeah. type Especially stuff. I'm sure like in Connecticut too. Yeah, you know, that's, that's funny. It's like other than a few friends who were putting me on to that stuff who were a bit older, there was no scene for that. Yeah. No one ever came there. I was coming into New York to see big acts. Like I'd come to New York to see Platt or Amon Tobin or like Square Pusher or something like that. Um, but even before I lived here. Um, but it, yeah, where I was, there was nothing. There was a lot of rock and a lot of stuff like that. And there's a lot of rap and also a lot of hardcore like punk and stuff too in New Haven. So there was a good diverse scene there, but there wasn't any electronic stuff that I was plugged into. I'm sure it was happening, but I didn't know where it was. Fair, fair, yeah. And also to be fair, like when I still lived there, the idea of like dance music to me was just ns, 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 and like EDM and like I was like, that's not for me. I need the weird stuff. Yeah. And like now I love I love it all, so I don't <laughs> I don't I don't pass any judgment. Fair. So you moved here, kind of got acclimated. And you, I mean, I, I first heard of you, I think, when I was probably in high school. That's and so funny. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, like, you know, I was listening to a lot of your stuff. And for me, and I'm sure for like a lot of people, seeing you at that point make a music that was a bit more outside of the country, you were kind of the pinnacle of, holy shit, there's this dude from the U.S. who's doing it, and he's fucking killing it. 
what kind of, as you were figuring yourself out and navigating New York, I know we've talked about before you found a particular club where you found a community. Yeah. How did you kind of graduate into, I guess, in condensing things since we have 30 minutes, initially getting that point of being a working musician and figuring out a, for then, I guess, a sound that you were outputting? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was piecemeal. Like, I, I, when I moved here, I was a part-time student. And I was working 20 hours a week at a friend's seminary in the East Village, substitute teaching. Oh, really? Yeah, the Quaker school. The church is always uh, in your life. Sure, uh, yeah, various <laughs> churches, at, at points, temples, you know, uh, growing up. But um, so, 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 yeah, so I had to financially, firstly, take care of myself. So I had a job, and I was going to school. And I had a small nut, so to speak, so it was it was all manageable, um, and I was making music. Um, but then, right, I found this club night. I found I found uh, Dub War at Club Love, and what was funny is like the first night there. I mean, I would go. I was I was straight edge at the time. I was I was I wouldn't say sober because I've been sober in my life, and I've also been straight edge. And I think there is a difference. At the time, I was straight edge. So I'd go to the club and I would stand in the corner with like a bottle of water and just like love the music. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to go say hey to the DJs here because I got to start like figuring out like just these seem like cool people. And the guy that I met there, Dave Q, who ran the night, turned out to be from like the town over. You oh, know? And, and his younger brother was best friends with my friend Jamie in New Haven, who gave me my first Square Pusher CD. So like the circles just kept... Uh, connecting themselves, Magic completing themselves. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, well, we're not that far away from New Haven, but um, it no, 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 no magic. Well, and then what the coolest thing that Dave did is he was like, he was like, you're in the corner, like hugging the wall with a bottle of water, aren't you? I was like, yeah. He was like, come in the booth, like come hang on the DJ booth. And that club, at some points, there was like 20 people in the booth. Like it would get, it, it was insane. Like so. to the point where like they would stop the music, and be like, all right, if you are not. DJing or performing here, please leave the booth. Because no one wanted to turn around and be like, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. It was kind of just like, that might have only happened once or twice. To be honest, the, the vibe was always incredibly generous and like kind and, and like really welcoming and like, and it was and it was pretty diverse, you know, as far as the, the late aughts go in New York, you know. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I was like, so I was making music, making music, making music, and around the same time, I sort of found a sound that resonated with me that was like, it felt true to me, it felt wild and weird and different, but like it felt like it could be part of a scene, which was sort of the, the two-step garage revival that was happening in the UK. It was like post-Burial, right? Burial's second album had just come out in 2009, and it was like, all right, okay, this is happening. Like, here's a sound I love. And I was making that stuff, and stuff I started making was good enough to get signed um, and as it got signed, I also gave it to Dave, and he was like, yo, play Dub War. So he gave me my first ever show, and I played it live. Like. I played with not the keyboard that I gave you, but uh, the keyboard I had right before it, and it just had, like, scotch tape on every single key with, like, Human Meadow bass. And that was the bass line for the song Human Meadow on my first album. And then, like, you know, Dionysus hi-hats, and that was the hi-hats from track two on that album or whatever. And it was just, like, all in Ableton, loop-based you know, I set the, the quantize to, like, quarter notes so I couldn't fuck up, you know, and just, like, hit it, and then hit it, and I just, like, played my album live, and, like, it was cool. Like, my friends came. That's it was I mean, that's, that's sick. That's, I don't know. That, I mean, you see, even within, like, the, you know, our group that we're a part of now, that's, that space is, feels both small and intimate, but it's also, like, big because it is setting the precedent for, hopefully, a larger reach. You never know who's watching, who's paying attention, how many people are affected by things, you know? And uh, this might be a tangent, but I think it's related. I was, you know, I sent someone an email uh, last Friday at around 4 p.m., and then I, uh, it was a work-related email. It was invoicing, which is what you do as a freelancer. You're invoicing, and then you're keeping on, I'm like trying to get paid for something I did like a year ago, whatever. And I was like, you know, I just sent someone this email. It was a polite email, which was great. This is nice. I don't hey. always send those. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so glad I did that because like, I, I, I just transferred my energy to this person. It's literally the last thing they're going to look at on Friday before they go into the weekend. I could have just ruined their weekend or, or like made them feel good about their job too. I don't know why I got into this. Was this related to something we were just talking about? <laughs> uh, we were, well, we were talking about the intimacy to me that you feel in, in the New group. York where you forget how big how many people the impact like, it is. You yes, know? exactly. So, yeah. no, that, that's the connection I was trying to make. <laughs> Man, my, my brain is like firing on about hey, a half cool. a cylinder I'm gonna keep right now. Pounding this uh, whiskey here. I had I had a beer, which is my my <laughs> limit earlier. 
<laughs> oh, the wine in that Coco Vin, you never know. I mean, yeah, the chicken's juicy. Yeah. Um, but okay, yeah. I feel I we kind of touched base on that. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to kind of now speed up to where we are now in the past couple of years. <laughs> We're there. Um, we're also going to do, uh, I sent you some questions. I'd feel bad if I didn't ask them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have my phone because it's recording. Well, as I told you, I did take a quick glance at them, but I don't want to spend too much time thinking about them because then I'll just be, like, too prepared and in my True. head about them. But they the all one that I was most interested in was... Yeah. Don't say do restaurant. Have... No, I'm just kidding. Is it favorite New York restaurant? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've asked that before. That's political. <laughs> I'm like, Felipe's joints. Yeah, I, I know. know. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, like... <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Make good. sure you you might want to say somewhere in the Upper East Side for somebody. You might want to say somewhere. Yo, the bodega on <laughs> South 6th and Bedford, my guy, makes me the best tuna sandwich ever. Nice. <laughs> what sauces are you putting in there? No, no, no. Here's what I do. Okay. Toasted whole wheat. Okay, good. Tuna with a little bit of extra mayonnaise. Don't judge. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, <laughs> you need it with the like tuna. A, I, I know you're here. You gotta <laughs> cut the tuna, and then and then and then and then I don't want to overcomplicate it. But here's the thing: I had banana peppers, spicy Ooh, banana oh, that's peppers. Good. Like oh that. my lord! Like Come out of the gym, eat one of those. You Ooh. are good. Yeah, definitely five like Tic Tacs, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, no, I w- was curious if you have any places that you like that aren't record stores that you pick up records from or you find Ooh, in New That's York. a great question. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's so cool. You were there. When I came in to do my show at the lot yesterday, the people before were like, hey, you responded positively to the DJ mail out of this record, so here it is physically. And honestly, like, a lot of the records I get these days are given to me by people, that's which sick. is incredible. That's sick. Um, and I... Uh, I, I feel like I need to still participate in vinyl culture because I run a label that, that makes vinyl. Yeah. It's not like a hypocritical thing to not buy vinyl and put it out, but like I feel like I need to somehow, I don't know if it's karmic or whatever, but I enjoy collecting these things, even though they're taking over the main room of my house. Yeah. And it's been a couple serious conversations with my partner about it, but um, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, other, you know, from other gifts from other people, and I will, st- I'll stop at a crate full of records on the side of the street in the weather that it is right now. I'll, I'd love having like a, just a quick little dig. I actually, when I go to a place like A1, which I love, I get overwhelmed because, and I go from here to here to here to here to yeah, here. Yeah. You could spend eight hours just on one, just on a letter yeah. of the alphabet. Fair. You know? It like poop and like, you're like, <laughs> yeah, I can't, like, I'm I too go. far from a public restroom. Yeah. Um, although apparently they've got the downstairs there is like the real vault. I've never been down there, but. Mm, I don't think I have either. Yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, gifts, gifts from folks and like, and, and I do trades with other people that run labels, oh, labels that I like it. as well, which is cool. Like, here's what we put out this year is, you know, and whatever. Um, and if I'm playing New York shows, um, I try and bring the vinyl out with me and play it then. Yeah. Tim good. Sweeney, Beats in Space, yelled at me. I had him on my East Village radio show a couple years ago before Lot Radio. And I was just playing on a USB and he was like, Drew what the hell man like you run a label you have vinyl (laughs) it's like 2 p.m in the afternoon there's no like (laughs) drinks around here like why aren't you playing your vinyl out here you should he was like play your vinyl (laughs) and i was like you're totally right yeah there's no reason not to and you see like maybe only 10 percent of the time i come to do my show the lot do i have a little bit of vinyl with me i should really be doing it all the time yeah yeah it's it is nice it's good i mean that that is i guess like you said that's the currency that really supports the culture yeah definitely yeah um gotta recoup so kind of pointed on two ends. One, I want to talk about Blueberry, but also maybe in conjunction, maybe not. Um, you now being kind of like a veteran producer and DJ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how do you, like, what is your connection to the youth at the moment? Like, what is your kind of perspective in general? You have a, you know, a great place having a residency and being a, a you know, kind of one of the founders, I'll say, from being there from the beginning. It's a heavy, heavy, heavy word, I know. Okay. Um, of the lot, but like, you know, just even like... Yeah, an early resident that. DJ. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, what, I mean, that's a huge one. It's like, because I know I can go out in my old age uh, and have an earlier night at the lot at a party and like, and like get my social fix and meet people in the scene and stuff. I don't have to go to a club. Like, man, my friend played elsewhere last night and it was, what, the coldest night of the year and he was yeah. on at two or whatever. And I was like, I just can't do it. I just, well, I just don't want to do it. But I like would have loved to have seen him play. Uh, and who he is actually is Daisy Kira, Adrian, who helps me run my label, 
And he's he's a young guy, and, and like yourself, and everyone who works at the lot. So you're all my connection to a lot of it. Mm. You know, I mean, I've got an internet connection, so I'm hearing things just as quickly as you all are. But but uh, I see what really moves you guys and girls, you know, in the clubs, and I and I and I latch onto that, and that's what's really interesting to me. So so. I've signed like three or four artists to my label this year who are all under the age of 25, 26, and they're all onto some new shit. You know, they keep me on my toes. Nice. What is what is this new shit? Like, what are you uh, excited about right now? Uh, I'm excited about. I mean, yeah, the new artists I've signed. One is this uh, this woman, Maxime, uh, makes music under the name Benedicte. Uh, uh, it's got a uh, sort of a Montreal French pronunciation, which I butcher, but yeah, she's I think up in Montreal, and. Uh, uh, just to use terms that to like relate it to things. I mean, th- what the vibes I got from her music was sort of a James Blakey sparse like uh, R&B, like a lot of centered around the voice was sparse electronics. But there's also like a techno sort of like underlying vein to it, which is so the combination just sounds incredibly unique to me. Um, and it was like a SoundCloud find, you know, like it was a real, real cool thing. And what I like too is that like. So I signed Jesse Egan X Glare to my label last year, and she and Maxime just sort of found each other online too, and they chat all the time. So everyone that I end up signing to the label just ends up chatting to each other. You've I'm met okay, Adrian so. Daisy yeah. Kira a few yeah. times, yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna release one of your tunes on Blueberry. Yes, World yes. premiere. You heard it here first, hey. folks. I got the dibs on Spurge's tunes. <laughs> um, and uh, what's your what's the artist name you're gonna release under? By the way, have you, uh, you read? Spurge, Spurge, but with the like bookended S and E. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, and, and I think it's like it's creating a little community. And so, so now I have like three or four artists on the label that are all living in New York. So like I can do a Blueberry Showcase somewhere properly and we can all go play it. Yeah. You know, I don't need to bring in someone else. Like we can just all do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I love it. I love finding new young. I can sit at home and I can get like curmudgeon and like frustrated that like I don't have my finger on the pulse and that like I don't make deconstructed club music. I make club music. Mm. And I love deconstructed club music. I just can't or won't do it. I make straight ahead stuff. So, which actually wasn't considered straight ahead, but now it is in compared to a lot of the other stuff that comes out. So like, so I'm not gonna sit there and get frustrated at all these other things, like feeling like I'm missing out on different scenes. I'm gonna sign those kids and I'm gonna help them realize their dreams. And it's dope and I gotta be a little part of it. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to yeah. do it. That's a good way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I'm curious also if you have any, especially, you know, I'm at that point where you were talking about where you're, like, working at a seminary and, like, you know, trying to kind of, like, hopefully get to a point of being able to, like, work and live off of this. Since this is more your lifestyle and you are doing a good job of interacting with younger artists, what do you have to impart in terms of, like, lifestyle or, like, even, like, managing living, being a working artist? Great question. No. And it changes all the time, right? So every year is different from the last. I've had incredible years, and I've had some rough years. Like years where I'm like, I'm too old to have a year this rough. You know what I mean? Like, or and to not like be like, all right, I had a good run. Let's get another job. I told you, I was look, I was I was filling out job applications a year and a half ago. I didn't send them in, thank God, because if I got the job, I would have had to take it. In any event, um, I started piecing it together from tours. And back in 2009, I would go on like a, uh, like a six or seven date tour or 10 date tour across two weeks in Europe. And I'd come back to a thousand dollar phone bill, you know, Yikes. <laughs> before it got good. And I'd yeah. like, it, which would like negate a lot of the progress I made over there. But the tours got better. The fees got better. I released more records. I got income from records. I signed a multi-album, multi-publishing deal with Ninja Tune at one point with serious advances, which was fantastic. Um, but that doesn't last forever. Um, I've done some commercial work. I've done things that I don't talk about online. I've, you know, I've done stuff for bigger companies that aren't like the most greatest things to work for in some senses. But like, yo, I'm trying to like get paid so that I can keep doing music full time so that I don't have to sacrifice the art I make. So you piece it together from a bunch of different things. Remixes, loads of remixes. I still do tons of remixes. Um, Barry. <laughs> yeah, Barry. That Barry was well, but that was that was that was that was that was a that was a mate's rates. That was I think we just yeah, did. I mean, that was, yeah, that was love. Yeah. That's love, and I still do. And I want to do that. I want to do remixes just for friends, you know, for free or whatever. But yeah, I do money ones too. Um, you just gotta like piece it together you know one year it's like the largest amount of the income comes from an advance of this record the next year it's only touring and then the next year it's just light you know like 
it's really piecing it together. And I didn't quit my job the minute I signed to a label. I like slowly like worked less hours. And then one summer I came back in like 2011 and worked a little bit as well, you know? You know, you look at someone who's got a mile long DJ list and a couple releases under their belt, you think they're crushing it. They might just be getting by, especially if you live in a city like New York where the rent is too damn high. Yeah, that's you true. Know? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask, even, even, I know we've had conversations before about. Oh, and keeping my studio in my house. That's why I've saved a lot of money. I, I can't facts. afford two rents. Yeah, facts. I don't know who has a studio outside I, of their house. That I love being able to make music at home. It's so good. Yeah, it's the best. So convenient. Um, My neighbors you, don't like it, but... <laughs> uh, even kind of on that same note, we've talked about this, um, dealing with, within this industry, particularly either like, you know, heavily DJing or even just not always knowing where the next step is going to be since it is creative field. How has it been coping with like, you know, emotional and mental health? I know at one point, like working out was something you like really came to and like helped with for stability, but like... Yeah. Yeah, so I haven't talked much about it, but um, 2015 threw me a bunch of blows. Uh, just a couple bridges getting torched, you know, either by me or by them. And uh, deals falling apart and a lot of things that I thought were for... That's, that was the hardest, that was the steepest learning curve that year of thinking that I had this and this and this. Just like, it was just good. I didn't have to worry about anything. But it all gets taken away. Oh, agent dropped me because he moved to a higher position, had to get rid of half, you know, Windish had a huge, like, changeover. All these things happened, and I was like, man, I don't have any control in my life. So I went from getting paid to put albums out to paying to put my own album out mm. on my own label, which is what we should all, which, I don't know, we should all have both experiences, I guess, but, like, in the long run, it's better to put it out yourself in a lot of ways. Like, the recoup after minimal investments on your own, you know, it can be really good. Um, if you get some syncs or just a couple of runaway singles, I had like, what? so, so anyway, so yeah, so I made an album and I tried to get another labels and like a lot of doors were like just closing in my face. So I was like, all right, I have blueberry. Like, why don't I just do this? Everyone's like, Drew, do it, do it, do it. I way overpaid on press, which I've now learned. You don't have to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, you learn a couple different, um, you make some mistakes but I said, all right, I have no control over how this album will be received. I love it. I put everything I have into it for like a good two years. I need something in my life that I can have some control over. And also, um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting like this all day long on my computer or, or like playing video games like this, you know, or whatever. Like I need to augment this lifestyle. I had already quit smoking cigarettes, which was good. Um, but I needed something more and I got into exercising and I have an addictive personality and like the cool thing about exercising especially lifting weights is you see crazy results in like the first couple weeks and then it gets actually harder to like make improvements like small gains you know mm. but um, I got into exercising and yeah I joined a gym that's literally across the street from my house so which is what makes it great to get there and I go like six or seven days a week so like take care of yourself so that's helped the mental health bits I mean, having a partner that's not in the music scene, that is just has a solid head screwed on so tightly, Carme is my everything. She takes such good care of me. And I've... Shout out. Yeah, shout out to Carme. I love you, baby. And, like, and I help her out, too, you know? And two freelancers under one roof. Like, <laughs> it's often that one is struggling a bit and the other is doing okay or whatever. <laughs> but when, like, you're both sitting there scratching your heads going all right i need to change something i need to do something else. like it can get real rough but we've just like we've had each other's back for like a long time now and that was a huge thing too and like and i've maintained a couple friendships outside of music just super solidly strong you know and they come and they hang out with a lot and they come to my shows if i'm not playing too late um we all need naps now before i go on but uh yeah, like staying in touch with like real people and exercising and eating right. The just like simple things have really helped me tremendously. That's good. Yeah, structure and, and like and get off the internet. Max, get off the internet as you're watching this on the internet. On the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you can watch this interview and you can either be like, "Well, this is a positive, cool thing, and, I, and I'm relating. This is great." Or if you're in a bad mood, you can watch and be like, "Oh, look at these cool kids! Like they're doing something cool. Like why am I not doing that?" And I've been on both sides of that coin. It's like, make it happen, be nice to people, act in a way that you will respect yourself later, and, uh, and fall in love with what you're doing. 
when you're making when you're actually making the art you need to you need to believe it's the greatest thing ever and just be in love with it so true and I forget that all the time yeah you you, you know? are your biggest advocate yeah you gotta be you just gotta love it uh, we have five more minutes. Okay. Very quickly, I kind of want to touch base on what you've been up to for the past year slash yep. what you're doing yep. as well. Um, I guess we've all very briefly gone through somewhat of your career. <laughs> yeah. But I know you kind of had a little bit of a switch in terms of what you've been working on, what you're doing to an extent. Yeah. And managing Blueberry and getting different distro and mm -hmm. more focus on that. Yep. yep. Summarize very quickly and then otherwise you've been... Yeah, the label switch was huge to a new distribution, taking that very seriously. Um, and then also... Commissions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, send them all. No, send them blueberry, blueberry recordings at gmail.com. I mean, you can hit me up in 20 different ways. And I listen to it all. SoundCloud, whatever. Um, uh, 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 oh, what was I saying? Oh, no, so yeah, the, lab, the label was the label change up was huge. But also, I since I don't want to do quite as much traveling, I mean, I still want to take really fun gigs and stuff. Even, even and I want to take the hard gigs too, but and challenge myself. I really wanted to get into producing for others, and uh, and yeah, and I and I executive produced Mickey Blanco's next album, uh, which is supposed to come out in, in in the spring, but I think it's just being delayed a little bit. So hopefully, it'll be the end of this year. But um, that project just like opened my mind. Yeah, how how it was opened that process my working with somebody? Eye, yeah, like which is back here. You don't that know that. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, no, exactly. It's like I've done one tune with someone. It's like okay, I did an eight-hour session with someone. That's great. But I've spent like yeah days and weeks with Mickey and getting to know him and to watch someone who is like a hundred percent heart. Like he's very smart too, but he just acts from his heart. Has been. An incredibly, it's just been an incredible gift I didn't expect to receive because I can go between brain and heart so much. And like when I'm making the music, I should be all heart like that, you know? Mm. And the collaboration process and letting someone else in, like working with like Anoni is on the album and Yonsi from Cigarose and like all these people, Kelsey Liu. And it's just like, yo, I can't get to work with these people on my own yet necessarily. So I'm going to like, scoop in on this and just be there and like there's been moments where I'm like I'm just like I can't believe I'm in the room I'm in the room you know and I forget that like yeah there's 12 years of hard work behind this to get here but like it's huge it's just amazing it's cool, yeah. incredible and I hope and that's open doors and because of that there's I've already worked with people that I on it like legally and can't talk about because I'd be terrified to but like the, the levels have increased beyond my dreams yeah. you and know? that's Something, a direction you're interested in more, kind of doing yeah, more Yeah, definitely. Or? Yeah, totally. I mean, like, I want to, my studio has a sound, and I want to record people in that studio, and I want to, like, build a discography of me just being the executive producer. Nice. And I want to keep doing that. Submissions at what, Blueberry Records. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> send me your best shit, though. <laughs> Um, so actually, send me your best song and your worst song. Facts. Because we think our worst Spectrum. song is our worst song is probably our best. Probably the best one. Yeah. Usually <laughs> so, those are the hits. So well, the let ones me just, that yeah. was like five minutes to make. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Totally. Yo, yeah. I met. Yeah. Well, I, well, I almost just spilled some beans. <laughs> but like, the, yeah, people make some hits are made in like. Mo, what? Uh, Sheck West. That tune was like yeah, a mistake. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like he was. And no, like I didn't meet like, him. But I'm just saying, like yeah. that song was made in like a half like, a day, yeah, and it's, it's like, like right, bullshit. So you never know. Um, and yourself, anything else as we're wrapping up that you have coming on the horizon? Or yeah, I just dropped a record on my label called If All the People Took Acid. Yes. The one with the acid flesh? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The cover is like the acid. And uh, I got a record on okay. Unknown to the Unknown coming out in March. And then a record on April on my label again, which is an old two-step song of mine with remixes from Benny Ill. And actually, this week, I decided to get back into my next Faulty DL album, which I want to drop after Mickey's, but I'm not sure if that'll happen or not. But uh, I'm working on my next album as well. <laughs> nice. Um, two things that we do at the end of every show. Okay. One, um, and also, very quickly, I totally did not do this with Talk, so I feel very bad. I just want to say sorry, Talk. Yeah. Um, Big up talk. Yeah, big up talk. It's his birthday today. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Noah's doing something at Rose Gold for him. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Talk's a fucking man. Yeah. Um, Makes who, a mean dumpling. Who should we have on here next? That's one question we Ooh. end this with. Ooh. For your recommendation. Musical people. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, you know, I, maybe less even musicians, because... 
the point of this to me is to illustrate how the music industry works. Yeah. So yeah, just somebody involved in music in different capacities. Yeah, you know, you know, we're right in that Greenpoint area where there's a lot of labels that are being run, you know, and if you hit up someone like uh, Sam who runs Ghostly or Charles from Warp or someone, like it'd be fun to get, um, I'd love to hear an interview with someone who's been running a successful label for a long time. Fuck yeah. Um, oh, I've That's started working. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm signing an EP, I think, I hope, from this woman, Sophia Says. We were talking about her. Yes. She yeah. sent me her next record that's coming out, and it's just going to floor people. You should definitely okay. chat with her. Please. Um, yeah, those are my two. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then, otherwise, the last thing we do is, which this is also what I knew with talk, but I got you, talk. Don't worry. I got <laughs> it. Uh, I give a gift from a New York 99 cent store Ooh. at the end of every interview. Um, Derek, Where's the you gift? grab me the uh, cargo bag, that bag right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in here, which is sticking out right now. I don't get the bag? The bag is dope. <laughs> this is good, yeah, this is good. This is when American Apparel closed the first time. Okay. Um, in here we have the gift, which I'll let you reveal. Is it the bag? Or is it just what's in the bag? It's a, No, it's what's in the bag, I'm sorry. Yo. I already know what it is, and I, we need these at the moment in my house. <laughs> it is, Aww, it grapes. is a grapes towel because you're a grape. Well, <laughs> and blueberry, but I was just yeah, gonna say yeah, yeah. close. There enough. wasn't a blueberry towel. Close really. There wasn't a blueberry towel. <laughs> I feel like I just started talking to the mic the right way. <laughs> I hope you could hear any of this, but uh, this was actually a dollar nineteen, so I think I owe you twenty cents. Uh, I usually go. I, I go over budget for the good guests. <laughs> Thanks. This hey. is like a very weird Nardwar. You're like, <laughs> you're like. <laughs> It's like already used from the 99 cents. <laughs> That's my bucket list, though, is like a Nardwar. A Nardwar? Hell yeah. No, come to South by. Yeah. It's always trolling yeah, around yeah. there. Right. Everyone, I said Nardwar. Like, four people just looked at me like, like, Nardwar? Oh, shit. What? He's yeah, here? Every, no, everyone, because everyone loves Nardwar. Yeah, he should come on the show. We should just have, like, a group grill. Reminds me of, like, uh, like uh, golf cleaning. Like, this could be, like, on a like, golf bag. Sweat band. You, like, you're boxing, and it's like, you got it, Joey. Don't worry. Take this back, because I'm just going to want it. All right. All right. Um, all right. That was pretty much You've been listening it. to Baselines and Banter. This yes. is not a club with Spurge Carter. Thanks I'm so Paul TDL. Show. Thanks for tuning in. Yes. Check out the new EP. It's really good. Check it. Stream it. Yes. Look Download out for it. some new music this year. Yeah, and every Wednesday at the Lot Radio, 4 to 6 p.m. Yes, he may just play his entire album, potentially. Yo, next Saturday, Lot Three Year Party. <laughs> yeah, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm going to miss it. Oh, you're, oh, that's right, you're on tour. Yeah. Yeah, yo, take every experience in. Have so much yeah. fun. Enjoy it's gonna that. going to be sick. Yeah, be sick. no, it definitely is going to be sick. You guys have a good thing going. You do. It's fine. I've, I've, I've been a believer since day one. I'm a day one with I Barry. You I really are. have. You are. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun. Cool. And, yeah. I don't know. I do feel grateful to have people like you who I've looked up to and admired from afar when I was younger. Yeah. But also like, yeah, likewise. To, That's what I want to say. Like, likewise. I yeah. like, like, thank you so much. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to have your friendship. Exactly. It's yeah. Awesome. Like, get to know and yeah, get to for you to just be very honest always about yourself. Yeah. For me to learn from, but also for you to give guidance to. Early on, I said if I'm gonna have a shtick. It's going to be that I'm honest. Yeah. And it's going to hurt me at points, but it, overall people are going to at least uh, like respect that to yeah. some degree, unless you're on the yeah. other end of that shtick. Yeah, but I mean, you know, like within music industry, it's it's hard to find usually a lot of people who are yeah. willing to be vulnerable yeah. in that manner if yeah. it's not like on a record. Yeah, know. totally. So totally. I love you, bud. Love you too, man. It's mad Thank sentimental. You. Yeah. People probably have stopped by now, but <laughs> all right, we're done. We're done. Peace. Peace. Good.